In this video, I'm going to have a look at the initialization method associated with a subclass of the frame class. And I'm going to consider in some detail the self parameter associated with the initialization method. If you have not already done so, I recommend you watch the previous two videos in this series on using inheritance when building graphical user interfaces. In the last video we looked at this program here and you can see that we have a class defined and the class is red frame which is a subclass of frame and within the initialization routine here you can see that we have this code which sets the look of the frame and of course we've already seen that if we have the initialization routine we need to include this line of code here and on this line we create an instance of the red frame class and this positions the frame appropriately within the window and we get this output here where this is the frame within the window and you get these print statements and what they are showing us that the frame has an ID and that the frame has a type which is based on the red frame class also in the previous video we took a closer look at this program statement which creates an instance of the red frame class when we create this instance under the bonnet under the hood of python we have a data structure generated and the simplification of that data structure is shown here and we have the object created having an id which we said was the address of the object in the memory that the frame created had a type which is of type red frame and types in python are based on the class and it has a value and we showed the value to be the visual representation of the red frame when it appears on the window now all of this as far as a programmer is concerned is known by this name here so we went on to label this data structure with frame underscore a let's now consider this computer program and again you can see that i'm dealing with the same red frame class which is a subclass of the frame class and here you can see we have the necessary initialization method and there's a few things i wish to point out about this initialization method and the first one is this line which i've already discussed in the previous videos but i wish to return to it here because what this super is doing it's allowing us to invoke this initialization of the super class ie the frame class and it's necessary for us to get the ability for inheritance to take place these lines will actually set the look of the frame if you look here you can see there are two parameters self and this parameter here that I've called the window now within Python you will always need this self parameter when you are initializing now it's not a key word in Python but it is a word that is used by all Python programmers when they're building classes it's standard practice now you can call this anything you like but nobody else will know what you're doing so stick with self if we look here we're creating an instance of the red frame class and you can see that that creation has here my window which is the name of the object created on this line and the object created on this line is an instance of tk which is producing a window that the red frame is going to be associated with now this parameter is passed to here to so this parameter the underscore window now if you have a look here however you can see that there are two parameters whereas here we've only got the one parameter so why do we have two here and only one here? Well, we have to remember that when we create an instance of a class, we have to realize that what Python does, it generates an ID and the ID generated is given to here. So I like to think of these two parameters as receiving their values as follows. This is passed to here and all of this passes to here and what i mean by all of this the creation of the instance generates the id and that id is passed to here 
I would also like to emphasize the following point. If you look at this method here, you can see it's got this name, double underscore in its double underscore. And if you look at this line here, you can see that the name has not been referenced. What we have to understand is that when you create an instance of a class, as you're doing on this line, then this method is automatically invoked. You don't have to refer to its name. It's the very act of creating an instance, as you're doing on this line, that invokes this method. So when I now move on to this line, what you can see is I'm creating another instance of the red frame class. And this instance I'm associating with this name, frame underscore B. Now when this instance is created, this initialization method is invoked. And on this occasion, what's here is passed to here. And of course, this self receives the ID of the object that this line creates so self will receive an id not from a parameter but from the very act of creating the instance so these two lines create an instance of the red frame class and these two position those instances appropriately this line will position frame underscore A and this line will position frame underscore B. And you can see that they're positioned at row 0, column 0 and row 0, column 1. So when this program executes, what you will see is this. These are the two frames. And what we need to realize is that these two frames have an ID. This one has an ID and this one here has an id and we have to understand that when this is created an id is generated and it's given to self and when this is executed an id is generated and it is also given to self so when you see here you see this self then this self is using the id that was passed to here consequently when this is the id of this frame all of these settings here are associated with this frame and when this self has the id of this frame then all of these program statements are associated with self again but of course self now has the id of this frame here so let's consider the creation of a red frame as shown by this line of code here. And we know underneath the hood, underneath the bonnet of Python, we're going to get a data structure that I'm simplifying here. And you can see that this data structure is going to ensure that the object created has an ID. It has a type, which is based on the class, and it has a value which I'm showing as the visual value here. And of course, as a program, we would know all of that by frame underscore A, because that's the name I've given here. Now, if we have a look at this line of code, you can see it's almost identical to this. The difference being that here I've called this frame underscore B, not frame underscore A. Now, when we create the instance of the red frame using this line, we're going to have data structure created. And I'm showing that here. And what you can see is that it has a type and the type is the same as this. It has a value. And in this case, the value is the visual representation. And we can see that's the same as this. But now I'd like to refer you to the id and you can see that this id is different to this one because this is creating a different instance and of course as a programmer i would represent this with the following label and you can see the label is frame underscore b why underscore b because that's the name i've give it here so when i produce this line of code to create an instance of red frame i get this here and when i use this i get this and you can see that they have different ids now this computer program is the one we've just looked at with the addition of some extra lines for the purpose of a walkthrough of the code for this program and here's one of the additional lines and you can see that I'm printing the ID of self. If you come here, I have another print statement. And that's printing the ID of frame underscore A. And this line is printing the ID of frame underscore B. Now, as you would expect, when this program executes, what you're going to get is this here. You're going to get the two frames that have been created. 
This creates the first frame, this creates the second frame, and these two lines position the frames appropriately. And we've already discussed that. We will also have the following outputs, and these are the results of the print statements. So let's walk through the execution of this program and make sure you remember that the output from the program is as shown here and that these lines come from the print statement. I'm now going to remove this from view and introduce the execution space that we've seen many times in this series of videos. This is the first line of code to execute and it creates an instance of a window. This is the second line of code to execute and this creates an instance of the red frame class. And if you have a look at the brackets here, you can see that's my underscore window, which was the name of the instance of the window created here. Now this is passed to here because the initialization routine is automatically executed when you create an instance of a class which is precisely what this line is doing of course when we create this instance the self receives the id of that instance so if we look to the execution space when this executes what we're going to get is an object and that object is going to have the name frame underscore a why frame underscore a because that's the name we have here now if we continue with the walkthrough when the frame is created on this line this as we've already said will execute and this line executes and this will cause the initialization routine inside the superclass frame to execute and as i've said before this is needed to ensure inheritance takes place now here we're printing the id of self using this function here and this line produces this output and we can see that this is the id now this is the id that's given to self so when we come on to these lines here self is referring to the instance that has this id consequently these lines of code i can show in the execution space here because these lines effectively belong to this object because this self holds the id of this object that is bound to this name when this initialization routine is finished and the object is created we return to here and this prints the id of frame underscore a and this is the line here and if you have a look at the id you can see it's the same as this and that's because when we created the frame on this line i.e. the instance of the red frame class, this got the same ID as was passed to here. Now this is the next line of code to execute and you can see we're creating another instance of the red frame class and we're passing in this. So this is passed to here and of course this line of code creates an ID and that ID is passed to self. So now this code is referring to self again but of course self now has a different ID. So if we have a look to the execution space, what we will see happening is because of this line of code, we're going to get another object created and this other object we're calling frame underscore B. We're labeling it with frame underscore B because that's the name here that was bound to the instance being created. And of course, the next line to execute will be this. And we know that that allows for inheritance to take place and this now will print the id of self and that's this line here and you get this being the id of self and you can see that this is a different value to this one and it should be because on this line we're creating another instance of course we now execute these lines of code and it is using self but of course self now has a different id as was passed to here and the different id was of course shown on this line to be this number here consequently if i look to the execution space we have this lot of code being this lot here but now we can see that this self is holding the id of this object that is bound to the name frame underscore b so when this 
initialization routine completes for the creation of the current instance due to this line we find ourselves returning to here and this will now print the id of frame underscore b which is shown on this line and it gives us this number and you can see that this number is the same as this now the reason they are the same is because when we created the instance of the red frame class using this line the id created was given to this as well as being passed to here so we can see that this initialization routine is able to distinguish between the two objects because of the self parameter and this self holds the id of this object and this self holds the id of this object and of course these are the next two lines to execute and they will of course position the objects that are shown in the execution space on the window that's been created within this program and what we will see at the output is this and then we go on to execute this which ensures that the program stays in the main loop and of course this program doesn't do anything else but I would typically have buttons on an application and that's why we need this line of code in order to summarize this video I've returned to the program we've just had a walkthrough but I've removed the print statements and here you can see the class that I've been referring to the red frame class which is a subclass of the frame class now when I decide to do this as a programmer I have to realize that I need an initialization method and that's shown here and you can see its name is double underscore in it double underscore and you can see in this case it takes two parameters it takes self and the window but when I created the instance as you can see here there was just one parameter present and that parameter is passed to here but I will always need the self parameter because this will hold the ID of the instance being created and that's important so I can identify that instance it is possible here to have more than two parameters it depends on what you wish to pass to the initialization routine but without doubt you will always need this self this must be present so you can identify the individual instances if you want to use inheritance you also need to include this this is the super method that allows you access to its attributes where this is one of the attributes the double underscore init double underscore method of the super class i.e. the frame class and this will ensure inheritance takes place now here you can see I've decided I'm going to set up various aspects of the frame its height its width its relief its border width and its background color and you will note that I've used self and that self will refer to the instance that's being created because we've passed the idea of that instance to here so to summarize you always need one of these methods and you always need self before I finish the video let's make sure we're all clear on what we mean by inheritance you see this is the subclass this is the superclass and this is needed to ensure inheritance takes place now have a look at these lines and you can see that I'm setting various attributes I'm setting the height the width the relief the border width and the background color and have a look in total at the class red frame you see there's nothing in there defining the height the width the relief the border width and the background color because all of that was defined in this class the frame class the super class the fact that I'm allowed access to these has been achieved because of inheritance it is the red frame class is given all of the attributes that the frame class has consequently you can directly access these because of inheritance check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video